Hi. If you're dyslexic or know anybody who is, whether it be a child or an adult, you might like to watch this video right through to the end. It also might be a good idea if you can grab a piece of paper and a pencil because you might find you're going to be introduced to something that you will find really helpful. My name is Christine Blance. I'm a specialist dyslexia teacher, having qualified with the British Dyslexia Institute over 20 years ago. I'm going to introduce you to a spelling system of mine that's had some phenomenal results with all of my pupils, regardless of age. It is easy to use, fun to do, and it's extremely effective. And it has been published in some books of mine called Spelling Success, which I'll show you in more detail later on. The basics of the, the, the method consists of my initial word mnemonic chants. Now, most people know what mnemonics are. Mnemonics are basically a trick for the memory to improve recall. And mnemonics have been used for decades by all kinds of people. For instance, medical students have got a complete book on mnemonics for helping them remember things like blood vessels and bones and muscles. Pilots apparently use a system of mnemonics in the cockpit just before takeoff to help them go through the appropriate checklist. But in education, mnemonics have been used for, <coughs> for spellings that have been difficult for children to, to work out. And one word springs to mind, and that is the word because. And there is a chant that's literally circulating the, the schools, um, which goes, big elephants can always understand small elephants. Now, for those of you who are not sure how this method works, all you have to do is memorise this chant by repeating it out loud many times and then simply take off the first letter of each of those words in that order and you've spelt the word because. Absolutely nothing wrong with that method at all. It works really well. But my initial word mnemonic chants are infinitely more effective. I would like to introduce you to a little story that basically surrounds the invention of my mnemonic method and it happened over 20 years ago when I was teaching a girl in a local school and prior to this she'd actually told me how she was having great difficulty spelling words like because and there was a little phrase that she used which was really instrumental in the creation of this method of mine. She actually said I can spell words like because with the right letters, but I can't necessarily get them in the right order. <laughs> it sounds like something from Morgan and White. <laughs> so as I was driving to school, I suddenly thought what she needs is some kind of mental glue. And I thought, I know, I haven't tried the system of mnemonics on her before, so that might work for her. So I knew that this particular mnemonic chant for because was big elephants can always understand small elephants. And no sooner had I had that thought than suddenly this sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach when I realised, well, that's fine, you know, I can give her that chant for that particular word, but what about all the other hundreds of commonly occurring words that she couldn't spell as well? I thought she couldn't possibly have a mnemonic chant for, for each one because it would just be entirely confusing. And then, like a, a flash bulb at the back of my head, I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, what happens if you actually start the chant with the word that you're targeting? And on the way to school, I made up this chant for the word because, which was, because elephants can add up sums easily. And I took this into the classroom and introduced it to her. And I showed her what to do. So I wrote the word because on a piece of card like this. And then I wrote the chant at the top on the back leaving space for a drawing and I told her that you never ever have to write that chant out all you've got to do is repeat it enough times that it gets into your memory but also because that chant is in a sense like a little story to get involved with that little story to draw a little picture so she did this picture of the elephant in a maths lesson and then I told her now all you've got to do now is, let's say, repeat it out loud ten times. And it was important that it had to be out loud because when something is out loud, you re-hear your own voice through your own ears and it goes to a different part of the brain. 
So off she went round the classroom, because we were on our own in that classroom at the time, and she got to number five and she swung round and her eyes widened and she said, that's going to work, that's fantastic. And so I said, right, get to ten, so she did the other five, and then she came back and I asked her then to slow the chant down and then simply use the chant to spell the word because. And it worked. And she was so excited, she said, can I have more? And I said, well, no, because I haven't got any more. I just made that one up on the car on the way to school. So the pair of us made a few more in that lesson. She actually made one up herself, which I use to this day for the word white. White houses in the East. So this was such a successful first lesson. I thought, well, great, but next week, when I go along and see her again, she'll have probably forgotten the whole lot. On the contrary, she came running to greet me, waving these chants above her head, saying, these are fantastic, I want more, more, more. So over the next few months, I made up hundreds of chants for her, based on the, the words from a high-frequency word list. And within about a couple of months, she could memorise over 200. And that meant that she could now spell 200 commonly occurring words that she couldn't spell to save her life before. So with this being so successful with her, I decided to try it out on some of my other pupils and it didn't really matter what age they were, whether they were 5 or 56, the majority of people really took to this method. And there was one little boy in particular who was absolutely phenomenal. He loved the chants so much that I knew that he deliberately misspelt some words when I gave him a spelling test so that he could accumulate more chants. He could actually do in one hour 545 mnemonic chants. Now there's absolutely no way that anybody, unless you're a phenomenal memory man, could actually do that with ordinary chants. So the reason that this method is so successful is, well, basically because it's highly multisensory. If you think about it, when you're doing your chant, you're learning a little story. When you're drawing the picture, you're activating the visual memory. When you're saying the chants out loud, you're activating the auditory memory. And then when you come to actually write the chants, you're then activating the kinesthetic memory. So it literally lights up all different parts of the brain. The fact that you're starting the chant with the word that you're targeting takes away the confusion. I mean, for instance, there's a chant, Sally Ann is dead, circulating the schools. And if you say to somebody, what's that a chant for? People will glaze over for a few minutes and they'll go to Sally Ann is to S S A I D. Oh, said. And all of that's a le level of confusion. Whereas a chant like, said Alan, I'm daft, immediately tells you it's going to be for said. So this is the reason why it is so successful, far better than what I would call the ordinary chance. Now, I would like to show you a demonstration from some of my pupils. And the first demonstration that you're going to see is when pupils have actually learned a batch of chants, they've done the drawings, they've done the out loud ten times repetition, and they've practiced them till they've become fluent. And now you're going to actually see them testing themselves against the stopwatch in order to get them faster and faster because the quicker that these chants can be done the more successful they get embedded in the memory. Being exploring every night, can ant snip, better eat toast than eat rice, air is rotten, almost lost my old school tie, really easy ant to lose, first I remove some teeth, green rhubarb eaten every night, hair appears incredibly red, how all of her waddles, lamb attached my boot, her enormous, it, her enormous rings. Father and the hen enjoyed running. Idea did excite Andy. Front radiator, unused tractor, girl is really lazy. Just under some trees, half a large fish, kind Indian nearly died. Keep eating eggs, please. Liquid is quite usually in drink. Family at mice in London yesterday. Her, here, enormous animal roar. Old ladies, hold old ladies dog. Hurt uncle's right toe, gold objects look dazzling. One minute, three seconds. Brought round in the via, uncle gave us tea. Baby Annabelle babbled yesterday. Who's horrible old sausages exploded. Again, grins appear in nappies. Year ends, auntie remembers. Which horse is called Henry? Why hate yellow? Try raspberry yoghurt. Try reading extreme darkness. Two orange Oliver. See, excites. 
see Drake Auntie, raw apples with a many at New York, gave away valuable animals, magic her golden ice cream, wear enormous African robe, gone on Northern Express, early at rugby lesson yesterday, sold a little turnip, carry a really red yo yo, father in the head, enjoy running. Okay. 34 seconds. The next people demonstration that you're going to see is when the pupils have actually learnt the chants really at high speed. But then, of course, when they're testing themselves, they're looking at the card, and that, in a sense, is like a little bit of a help for them. Next stage, you're going to see me having taken the chants completely away from their eyes, and I'm simply just going to say the words out loud, and they are then going to say the chants from their memory. Idea. Idea did excite Andy. Father. Father and men enjoyed riding. Her. Her enormous rings. Lamb. Lamb attacked my boot. How. How all of her waddles. Hair. Hair appeared incredibly red. Green. Green rhubarb eaten every night. First. First I removed some teeth. Funny. Funny and then never, never yells. Full. Full up liquid loops. Black. Black, black labradors on cute kittens. Really? Really easy answer. Leaf lady yelling. Almost. Almost lost my old caught eye. Air. Air is rotten. Better. Better eaters than eat rice. Can. An ant's neck. Bean. Bean exploring every night. Gold. Old objects look dazzling. Hurt. Hurt. Uncle Saito. Hold. Hold old lady's dog. Here. Here enormous animal walk. Family. Family at mice in London yesterday. Keep. Keeping eggs please. Find. Find it now. Dad. Half. Half a large fish. Just. Just under some trees. Girl. Girl is really lazy. Front. Front lady to a new shark left. Kind. Kind in dinner. Gone. Gone on Northern Express. Father. Father and the hen enjoy running. Half. Half a large fish. Carry. Carry a really red yo yo. Salt. Salt a little turnip. Early. Early at rugby lesson yesterday. Wear. Wear enormous African robe. Magic. Magic a golden ice cream. Gave. Gave away value emeralds. Many. Many at New York. Raw. Raw apples with her. See. See excites Auntie. Two. Two orange Oliver. Tried. Try really extreme darkness. Try. Try raspberry yogurt. Why? Why hate yellow? Which? Which horse is called Henry? Year. Year and anti remembers. Again. Again grins appear in nappies. Whose? Whose horrible old sausages exploded? Baby. Baby animal babbled yesterday. Brought. Brought round Olivia uncle gave a tea. Very good. The next demonstration is when you will see the pupils being tested on their spelling ability of these chant words. Now, when they're learning their chants, they're obviously encouraged to learn them as quickly as possible, but when they're using them for spelling, they're taught to slow the chant right down and literally coordinate their hand and their mouth, so that as they're saying the chant word by word, they're writing the appropriate first letter. Just. Just under some trees. Half. Half a large fish. Find. Find it now, Dad. Keep. Keep eating eggs, please. Family. Family at mice in London. Yesterday. Here, when it's a sound. Here, enormous animal. Here, enormous animal. Roll. Hold. Hold, old lady's dog. Hurt. Hurt, uncle's right toe. toe. Gold. Gold. Objects look dazzling. Bean? Bean exploring every night. Baby. Baby Annabelle babbled yesterday. Whose? Whose horrible old sausages exploded? Again. Again. Gorillas appear. Which? Which 
horse is called Henry. Why? Why hate yellow? Try. Try raspberry yogurt. Two. Two orange Oliver. C. C excites anti. Raw. Raw. Raw? Raw. Mm -hmm. Raw apples with a many. Many at New York. Gave. Gave away valuable emeralds. Magic. Magic a uh, golden ice cream. This final demonstration is to see whether they can actually cope with their chant words when they're embedded in sentences. And what I like to do is I like to just take two from their pack at random, look at the chant words and then compose a sentence in which these two words are actually present in the sentence. So as they're writing the sentence out, when they get to the chant word in the sentence, they have to be able to use that chant sentence in order to spell the word correctly. And I'm thinking of a, a, one of my really earliest pupils who absolutely loved chants as well. And he used to say, you know, Chris, when you actually have learnt the chants and they're well in your memory, you can be sitting in the classroom and then you're writing something and you come across one of your chant words and the chant just comes out of your head like in a thinking bubble. And that's exactly what they should do. I gave him another chance and he tried again. I gave him another chance and he tried again. The words are gave away valuable emeralds and tried reading in extreme darkness. Number two. She had half and he had half and then it was all gone. She had half. And he has half. Then it was all gone. Then if I just so half a large fish, half a large fish, gone on Northern Express. Number three. The baby had a lovely time playing in the sand by the sea. The baby had a lovely Time playing on the, sa the sand next to the sea, and the words are baby. Animal babbled yesterday and C excites anti. So it's over to you now. This is where I shall give you a few chants and I would like you to write them down on the paper that you've got in front of you and then I'll tell you how to learn them or just revise the process anyway. So if we start off with some simple small words and the words gradually are getting bigger and therefore the chants are as well. Um, the first word, so. And the chant for that is so old. 
Next one, eight, and that's eight ten eggs. Find. Find it now, Dad. Which? Which horse is called Henry? Behind. Behind enormous hedge, I nearly died. Because? Because elephants can add up sums easily. And then finally, quite a big one to uh, test yourself with, birthday. Birthday is really the happiest day all year. So all you've got to do now is get a bit of card if you've got it like this, word on the front, clearly written, chant written out on the back, at the top. Maybe if you're, especially if you're dealing with children, you can embellish this in a little story just to make it you know, come to life a little bit more interesting. Then the next stage is the drawing of the picture. Then once the picture is drawn, it's a case of ten times out loud saying the chant. And then once they're all learned in this particular way, I would then suggest that you gather the whole pack up and then simply start going through them one after the other and speeding them up. So, so old, eight, ten eggs, find it now, Dad, which horse is called Henry, behind enormous hedge I nearly died, because elephants can add up sums easily, birthday is really the happiest day all year. And once they're flowing and are fast, and you can even get a stopwatch out and get them really fast, then take each one, slow the chant down, and obviously take off the first letter of each of those words, and spell the word. And then if you really fancy taking a random couple at a time uh, and then making them into a sentence. So, for example, um, which and behind, make a sentence up that includes those two and then dictate that sentence to a child and then see if they can cope with spelling these particular words within the, the context of a sentence. So I'm hoping that you're going to find that this is quite an exciting discovery for you um, and if it's anything like me I've had some phenomenal results with, the, with these methods and, and I'd like to think that you can do so as well. If you'd like to know a little bit more about this method you might like to actually look at the books that I've got out um, and they're all for sale on the, the well-known um, shopping channel. Um, spelling success. This is um, 263 high frequency words, each one having its own initial word mnemonic chant and each one has a, a, a lovely little illustration done by a graphic artist to actually illustrate what's going on within each chant. You can use the book entirely, one book per pupil, by simply going through the book, on, give a spelling test on all of the words in this book and any that they get wrong you can actually target and colour in the picture so you don't necessarily have to use the, the strips of card, although personally I prefer the strips of card because when you've got the chance on card then you can move them around and put them in different groups and categories according to how they're, they're learning them at any one time. So 263 high frequency words in there. And then there's spelling success. This dates back to an even earlier time. Um, entirely devoted to homophones. Now this method is great for homophones because when you're making the chant up, because you're starting the chant with the word, you have to bring some essence of the word into the chant itself. At least I usually try and do that. So um, you've got in a situation here where you actually encapsulate the, the meaning of the homophone word and the spelling of it. Um, for those of you who are not quite sure what homophones are, there are loads of them in English. They are words that sound the same but are spelt differently and have got a different meaning, and it's an absolute nightmare for dyslexic people. So, as an example, um, homophone, two homophone examples, um, the two breads, the bread that you eat, and the bread to do with breeding, the chant for the bread that you eat, bread rolls eaten at dinner, so straight away you've got the spelling and the meaning locked there, and then the other one, bread really exotic dogs. 
again, you've got the spelling and the meaning. So in this book, you've got loads of, of homophones, um, slightly smaller format here, and possibly this would be for older pupils. But um, again, you've got the initial mnemonic chant and uh, a little drawing to go with them. Now, when you're making chants up, and in my case, when I was making up hundreds of chants, I found it really helpful that I actually made myself a little dictionary specifically for making up chants. Um, and what I did was, at each letter of the alphabet, I actually organised all the words into different categories. So, for instance, nouns, adjectives, verbs, um, animal names, foods, plants, places, names. So if you're working through a chant um, and you get to a letter B, and it feels like it should be maybe an adjective of B, then you turn to B in here and you look down the list of adjectives and you've got a whole selection of them and it just makes making chants up infinitely easier. So that one is also available um, on, the, on the internet. Now I've also got um, a couple of websites. Uh, my main website is called www.helpfordyslexia.co.uk I've also got a similar Facebook site, um, which is also um, Help for Dyslexia. I've also got an email address, which is heb 18 sira at gmail.com. And I would really like to get feedback from you all to see how you're getting on. Now, these books of mine have actually been on sale for many, many years. And I know that they've been bought by lots of teachers in, in quite a lot of schools in the United Kingdom. Some have even gone abroad. And, and I would love it if you could give me feedback as to how you're actually getting on. And I would really love to find that there's somebody who has beaten my pupil who could memorise 545 in an hour. That would be amazing to find that there's somebody out there that's actually gone over that limit. So, if you could possibly get back to me on either of those methods, the, 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 um, the websites or the, the email, then that would be great to see how you're all getting on. And I hope that you find this method has been as uplifting as, as I have found it. I absolutely love getting a new pupil and introducing them to this method and finding that the majority of them really take to it and in some cases it's literally changed their lives. Obviously mnemonics feature very heavily in my teaching methods. Um, I use them obviously for the high frequency words, I use them for uh, homophones, and I also bring them into the, the long vowel section as well. But my teaching methods don't just use um, the, the initial word mnemonic methods because at the end of the day they are basically a gimmick. And they don't, a powerful gimmick, but they don't actually give you what's properly re referred to as word attack skills. So I also teach using methods of um, flashcards and uh, associated structured worksheets. And the combination of the two methods, the mnemonics and the structured worksheets and flashcards, basically amounts to my complete teaching method, which has taken people who have been non-readers and made them into able readers and some, in some cases into actual bookworms. So I'm hoping in the next few months to pull all of my teaching methods together in one package and publish it all. Um, so maybe if you look out for future videos about this, which should hopefully appear on the, on the website, but if you are interested uh, in knowing a little bit more about the other teaching methods that I use, then feel free again to contact me either on the website or by email. So I hope you're, and, and you enjoy using these chants that I've introduced you to, and, and I sincerely hope that you find them really useful.